What's happening everyone? We're back and uh, there was no intro video because we're doing this from the Facebook Creator app. So fingers crossed you guys uh, can get the notification. I'm going to go ahead and let you know that we're live. We are back. Um, so what we were talking about and there we are. Perfect. Mickey. Awesome. You know what? I'm going to test this because I haven't done it yet. I want to see. Oh, oh, check this out. Mickey, I know you're ready. Your camera ready, right? Let me know, are you camera ready? Because I want to test this out, because I'm on Creator App, uh, the Facebook Creator App, and it looks like, you guys, it looks like we might be able to bring guests back on via the Creator App. So see, there's a reason why, before we get into today's content, there's a reason why there's tech issues. Things happen for a reason, and today's tech issue, I bet you, is happening because it wanted us to see about the Creator App. So yeah, um, Erica, it says that I can't bring you on, but it says Mickey, oh, no worries, Mickey, don't, be safe, be safe. Um, it says, it's so weird, Erica, I wonder why it says I can't bring you on, but it says, oh, I wonder if it's your page. Are you tuning in from your page, I wonder? So you guys, we're using the Creator app today um, because my other one isn't working right, um, but I bet you that's why it's, it's doing that, Erica. So it looks like, it allows me to bring people back on. They'll receive, awesome, this is so cool. So if anybody tuning in during this broadcast wants to be on camera for a split second, just to say hi, just to test it out, let me know and we'll see if I can bring you on. Um, hey Aaron, welcome. Aaron, do you wanna come on camera? Are you camera ready for five seconds? Um, just saying. So anyway, we got our broadcast interrupted. Um, oh, let's see, Erica, it didn't say, I can't, it doesn't say that I can bring you on. Sorry, Erica. Are you on your phone? Maybe it's on because you're on your computer, that new fancy computer. Um, but yes, so we're back. Um, we're using the Facebook Creator app today. That's why you can see a little different um, bar and logo still in the same spot. That stuff is what I cover in my training. Um, and I'm so excited that the Facebook Creator app looks like it's fixed in terms of being able to bring guests on, which is awesome. Um, Mindy, I've been wanting to see how to use the Creator app. Can't wait to try it out. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, so Erica's like, I'm gonna try to get on Ed Talk TV again. Like, let's do this, Erica, bring it. Um, yeah, Mindy, so I used to use Facebook Creator app real quick. I'll give you guys a quick rundown. So I used to use Facebook Creator app to get started. It's great for on the go. When I'm at home or in a location, I'll use the computer because I have the eCam, but um, that's actually what the training that I created was uh, all about is the Facebook creator app getting started with Facebook live and um, using your um, Other options like Ecamm live and all that stuff. So there you go um, today. We went real quick. I removed the um, broadcasting uh, or the intro and outro videos I think on this one just because I wasn't using it So I need to double check that afterwards, but we're good Let's dive into the content because we're just gonna keep things rolling here. We're just gonna keep rolling. So that little clip that I showed you, oh, perfect, Erica, I'm bringing you, I'm bringing you. We're gonna do this real quick because I wanna test this out because this is important to know. Uh, see, this is why Facebook loves to mess with us. They're like, oh yeah, here's the green button. Oh yeah, you can go ahead, bring Erica on. And then guess what it says? Can't bring Erica on camera. Can't bring Erica on camera. What the heck? But I can like your comment. Look at that. I can like your comment. I wonder if I can bring anybody else on. Whitney, you don't have to answer this if you're still on, but I'm gonna hit the button and I'm just gonna say bring Whitney on just to see what it says. Just because I wanna see if it's just Erica, sorry Erica, or anybody else. So let's It must just be you because Whitney, uh, I just tested on Whitney's device and it was gonna bring her on. Please let us be great, right? That's what I'm saying. Um, Erica, I don't know what to tell you. That's, that's a bummer. But I can say at least it's not mine right now. <laughs> let me try. There we go, there we go, there we go, you guys. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. What, 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 yay. <laughs> that's awesome. That's so awesome. Love it. Yeah, isn't that yay. cool? So what um, device are you on right now? Just so people my know. IPhone. I had to go back to my iPhone. Okay. Cause remember I was okay. having that issue, like trying to bring on people live for my iPad and it wasn't working. And every time I've tried to go on live since I've been trying to do this yeah. quick giveaway, I've had to use my phone. The iPad won't let me. Interesting. 
And okay, and then you power down your iPad? Yes. Okay, okay. Yes. Um, that is very odd, very odd. Um, so you guys, what we're doing right now is we're just testing. We'll get into today's content, but what we, why we brought Eric on real quick is because we're using the Facebook Creator app, which is where we started with the show. But after Christmas, it kind of went kaputs when it was trying to bring guests on, it wouldn't let me. And now it gives me the green light. And now when somebody else is using their phone, um, it allows me to bring them on camera. So this is good news for traveling yeah. and being able to just go through the creator app and not use other programs all the time. It loves the phone. <laughs> awesome. Hey, okay. that's good. That's what we love. Thank you so much. Bye. Cool. Okay, guys. So let's, let's do it. So what it was uh, that we were talking about, we're going to just get back to the content. So um, what I showed you earlier was uh, from Good Morning America this morning, a young girl who was featured with her lip balm. And the reason why she created it at like eight or nine was because her dad told her, no, she couldn't have lip balm. So she went out and, or couldn't buy lip balm. So then she decided that she was going to create her own. Now she's being featured on Good Morning America, and I think she's 18 now or something like that. Um, and then, and then, on that episode, they gave her um, a uh, shout out from, or Sephora gave her a shout out saying that they want to bring her into their um, mentoring uh, program and most likely get her line in stores. Like, that's how it works. And again, it didn't happen overnight. It took time, right? And it started from just her idea. So keep that in mind. Um, that's a big one. So let's talk about this new uh, app. What, before I even jump into it, I kind of give you, kind of give it to you, but have you guys heard of this new app, um, this new social media app? And if you have, so even if you're watching the replay, uh, let us know, have you heard of this new app called Vero? It's a new social media app. Now I'm gonna say, I say it's new, but it's really not new. And we're gonna break that down here in just a minute. But I'm curious to see, have or hear if any of you have seen or have uh, been on it yet, because there's been quite a bit of talk around it in the last 24 hours or so. Um, anyone wanna take a guess at what it is or what you would use it for? Water, you always have to hydrate, that's a tip. For any of you who are thinking about going live, which you should be, uh, you always want to make sure that you hydrate and have water close by because you're always going to need it because it's a lot of work. So Vero is this new, um, oh, and I was going to show you some screenshots, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, Vero is this new um, photo sharing social media platform. So basically think of Instagram. That's what Vero is, but supposedly different slash better, okay? Now, I say it's new, but it's really not new. It actually launched back in 2015, but it just recently, like this past week, has blown up in the app store, like blown up. Um, do I have the stats on? I have like my notes right behind you guys. Um, the app, it's made, so a week ago, here's, here's, the, here's the info. A week ago, and actually I'm going to pull this up on my computer because I want to make sure that I see your comments just in case, because you know what happens sometimes is this Facebook creator app does um, freeze up on the comments, and I have a feeling that's what's going on right now. So let me pull you guys up on the computer. I'm going to mute it so I can bring that up and see your comments as well. There we go. Yes. Okay, cool. Now I can see. Now I can see. Okay. Haven't heard of it. Tried it. Um, in, yes, in the last few days, yay. Um, I've had the worst tech issues today. <laughs> Missed the whole webinar, oh no, Aaron. Yeah, sorry you guys, I didn't get your comments until just now. So here's a, here's a fun tip. You guys are learning through me, don't you love this? So when you use the Creator app, pay attention to comments, because let's face it, if you, have, if you know that you get at least a couple people during your live broadcast, which you, you'll, you'll get to know who they are, as the more you go live, when you know that you have a few people who are showing up all the time to your broadcast and then you are on the Facebook creator app and you notice that there hasn't been comments for a while, pull up your computer, pull up another device and take a look because I see you guys are all commenting, which is awesome. This is great, I'm just reviewing it um, because whatever reason it freezes up sometimes on the actual creator app. So 
I'm just looking, okay, on my iPad, okay, cool. Um, and then that's all there, perfect, okay. Um, yeah, I am not Tony, I am not on there. If you're asking other people, awesome. Um, and she's asking Vicky, okay, cool. So yeah, when it comes to the new platform, Vero, which again, it's not new, it just is new to a lot of us, where we are, um, a lot of people are jumping on it. now. It is a photo sharing app, but it's more than that. You can share text, you can share URLs, um, books, TV shows, and movies, like all kinds of stuff like that. So kind of like Facebook, right? Um, and what I want to ask you guys is if you know why this has become so popular. Like there's no right or wrong answer on this, by the way, but I'm curious, why do you think it's become so popular right now? And let me go back to that stack because I don't think I finished that, that comment. But um, a week ago, the app was ranked so low, it didn't even appear in the App Store's top 1,500 apps. Today, it's the most popular app in the entire App Store. This is for iOS, by the way. Um, they didn't talk about Android in there. Sorry, guys. Um, and I'm just looking through the comments. Hey, hey, guys, welcome. There's issues with Vero on sign up. Yep, probably due to the server issues. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that, uh, Tony. Perfect. That's nuts, right, Erica? It's a lot. Um, so the reason why, so even replay viewers, you can, you can let us know too uh, what you think about this and why it's so popular all of a sudden. But, and there's no, like, they don't really know what the exact cause of it spiking so quickly. But uh, Tony says people are wanting to move over because they are fed up with the algorithm changes. Yes, right there. That's it. Um, yeah, it, it's uh, that's what I would assume is the reason why the big reason why it is uh, skyrocketing in the app store. Now, here's the thing: before you go download it, don't don't just go download it. Stay here, hang tight, hold up, pump the brakes. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about it. Um, but yes, Erica, same thing, right? It's it's one of those things that allows you to. Uh, the, the Vero app is similar to Facebook, similar to Instagram, right? It has what, what we like for the most part, um, but it has what we don't like. Wait, it has things that we don't want. You guys all messed up today. Um, if this is your first time joining, don't worry about it. Keep coming back. It, it gets better. Um, but basically, they are a, a, a new app even though it's 2015, it's new now because people are fed up with the current options that they've had for years. Facebook and Instagram for years, right? They're, they're fed up with the new algorithm changes, which is killing all of us. I mean, hands up, right? How many of you are annoyed with the, the algorithm? On that note, let me also ask you, even if you're watching the replay, what would you like to be what would you like to see changed? Even if you're not a techie, you don't need to have technical terms or anything. What do you feel? What do you know? What do you want from any of these platforms? It doesn't matter if it's Vero. It doesn't matter if it's uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. It doesn't matter. What do you want from these platforms in terms of the newsfeed and getting those posts? What do you want? Uh, I have actually have zero issues with the algorithm changes. Nice, Aaron. Okay, perfect. Yeah, there's some that that you may not even notice a change. Some notice a huge change. It's, it's hit or miss, you know? Um, hopefully my Facebook stock doesn't tank. Oops. Sorry, Paula, I know, right? Uh, so keep that in mind. And like, even if you're watching the replay, like answer that question to the best of your ability, right? There's no right or wrong answer. But what would you like to see from any of these platforms? Like, it's just an open question just to share with everyone. What would you like to see? Um, Erica says visibility, nice. Uh, so that, that's a big reason, I believe, of why it's so popular right now. Now, here's the thing, though. It has glitches. Now, I haven't tried it. I, I will tell you right now, I have not tried it yet. Um, I don't know if I'm going to jump on that anytime soon. I'm going to wait and let it marinate for a little bit here. Uh, let me see these comments popping in here because I'm going to have to go from both devices. I want to not be held hostage and forced to buy advertisements just to connect with the people who have already chosen to follow on my business page. Nice, Mickey. Okay, yep. Um, social media is a free platform. I want to see the information from pages I've liked. Tony, I couldn't agree with you more. That is a big one. Um, not just what Facebook thinks I wanna see. Yep, 
my Facebook should work for me. Ooh, ooh, I love that. Love that. If I could put that on the screen right now, that would be up on the screen. I love that. Um, so we have that. Um, perfect. Okay, cool. So and another big difference for this, and this is stuff I've all, I've been reading you guys, because I haven't, again, I haven't tried out the platform. I'm not about to try it, at least not yet. Uh, we'll, I'll wait to see what other articles come out for it. But from what I've read, um, one of the biggest differentiators is reverse chronological feed. Um, they also have um, the option, and now we, we'll talk about this when it comes to Facebook. But again, this is more like an Instagram uh, profile versus a Facebook, but we'll talk about that in a second. They, uh, they said that you can also designate and I do like this. I do like this option. You can designate people as close friends, friends, acquaintances, or followers. Now, that's a big one. That's a big one. Can you tell me why? Or tell me how you feel about that one. Um, let me see Erica's comment. You might be able to address this later, but here are, was my question from yesterday. I heard that Facebook posts with links get, oh, yeah. So um, while you guys are talking about that comment real quick, uh, Eric was asking about the uh, Facebook posts having links in them and getting less visibility and getting buried. I have heard of this. It is a thing. Um, how much does it affect your post? I personally don't know. I know that um, Mari Smith, who is like Facebook everything, and I follow her a lot. I know she was talking about this. And when you add a link to the main post, it supposedly does lower your visibility for that post. So it's recommended to put the link in the comments. Um, again, do I know the stats on, does that really happen? No. And here's, the, here's, here's what I have a problem with when it comes to that is I, yeah, right, Aaron, too much work already. Um, so the problem I have with putting the link in the comments versus just in the normal post is you don't get that post preview, right? So if you just put the text in the post, then you have no visual unless you add a video or a photo, right? Then say that the link is in the comments. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't think I've worried. For me, I haven't really worried about that too much. Um, but again, if we're talking business page specifically, I don't really share too many links in my posts because most of the posts here on the business page are Ed Talk TV. It's just all live video. So the best thing I can uh, suggest for any of you guys who are looking at this and kind of curious is test it. If it's your business page, you have insights. You can click on that tab and kind of review. Give it a couple days though to review because sometimes if you look at it the same day, I don't know specifically how up to date that is, like up to the minute. Um, so give it give it some time, but you know, kind of play around with that and see what what it does, like how much interaction you get with that. Like for instance, today I'm going to be paying attention to this broadcast and seeing how far the reach is because I'm using the Facebook Creator app versus my desktop, which I was using the Ecamm Live. Now some of you might be thinking, well. Ed, why, why would there be a difference? Well, because when they launched Facebook Creator App, they were pushing it. Right now, it's kind of like, I, f I feel like the Facebook Creator App, they're just kind of like, well, we put it out there, so it's there. Um, but we'll see. So it, it's very interesting. So I like to look at the stats for that to see, does it get more push because I'm using the, the Creator App, which is their native, which is what they're trying to push out to people, or do I get pretty much the same no matter where I'm at? So you always just have to be testing and seeing because you can hear all kinds of things, but you won't know until you actually test it. Let me see the um, comments here. Uh, Mindy says, yes, if you don't put the link, you have to add an image. Yep, Facebook likes original images though. So if you throw one together real quick, it might help. That's a good point, Mindy, great point. Um, I think Facebook, uh, Sharon says, I think Facebook is trying to get away from politics stuff. Yeah, big time. Um, perfect. Okay, cool. So when it comes to, and then Vicky says, is this on Vero or Facebook with regards to the, oh, Vicky, uh, Facebook, we're talking to, sorry, we switched for a second to Facebook about links. Cause that question came up and that was left over from yesterday. 
So back over to Vero, which is the, the social media app that everyone's talking about right now and jumping on. That is more similar to Instagram from what I've read, from what I've seen. And then they allow you though to share links similar to Facebook. They allow you to um, go ahead and do like um, we mentioned, categorize your people. So basically uh, close friends, friends, acquaintances, or followers. Now, I will say that I do like that option, and you can kind of do that on Facebook. You can't do that on Instagram, but you can kind of do that on Facebook with lists. Um, it's just, I will agree with Aaron. If we did it on Facebook, it's a lot of work. The way I envision it, which I'm not going to say because, hey, I'm trying to come up with my own. Well, I've already come up with my own social media app. I just haven't done anything with it. Um, but I will say that having an easier process to add people to those lists slash segment them uh, will be so much easier. And I do prefer having followers versus actual friends, right? Because especially when you're here on Facebook, switching to Facebook for a second, when you're on Facebook, how many random friend requests do you get, right? And part of you is like, well, I want to get to know them and that'd be cool, but I don't know you, so I don't want to add you. And yes, I can add you to a list, but then that's a lot of work because then you got to figure out, okay, well, what list do they go on? Then how, how much do they actually get to see? I'm not really sure. So I'm either not going to add them or I'll add them. And then I just, who cares? I don't know. You know, like there's, there's, there's a lot of confusion. Um, it's just because they don't have me yet. Well, they don't have the competition yet. Um, I'm, you know, you know, I got to give it to you guys on a Thursday here. So anyway, so back to Vero, um, friends aren't necessarily your audience. Good point, Vicky. That is really good. So back to Vero that that's the big thing going on right now. Um, now here's the, here's the thing. The reason people are flocking over to Vero is not just because it's new, even though it's not really new, but it's because there's no ads right now. Now I say right now because we all know that things change. Things change. Like, yes, there's no ads right now going on over there, which is why actually it's interesting that people on Instagram are so fed up that they're now posting pictures of their Vero account to send people, all their followers to that account. I think that's too soon. I think that's way too soon to be doing that. So, um, but again, you have to test and you have to see what works for you. Um, I'm just looking at the comments. I just add people unless they are shady. <laughs> yeah. And if they have get spammy, I get to delete them. Yeah, Mindy, there you go. You got to be protective of your accounts. It's just like your inbox. You got to be protective of it. So, um, people on Instagram are starting to share their Vero account, which is great. But at the same time, if you're already trying to migrate your audience over to this platform that has a lot of issues right now, and we're going to talk about that in a second, that that's really risky because you're asking people to leave something that they're comfortable with, that they've been with, even if they are a little, you know, I mean, you don't know how they feel about it. They might be okay with everything on Instagram. You might just be the one having the problem with it, right? Like you don't know. So asking them to leave, to go to this other platform is, is really asking a lot, um, especially if the platform isn't up to par yet, right? So quick recap, it's been out since 2015. People are just now in this last week jumping on it and going over there. There are no ads. It is supposed to be better than Instagram in that sense because of the way that the feed is. But here's the thing, you guys, it all comes back down to design. How user friendly is it? How long does it take to load? All of these things play a huge part. And now I'm going to give you a couple, a couple uh, examples here and see if I can bring up, because I want to show it to you. And I'm just going to screen, like flip my screen so you guys can see it because we can't be on the regular, um, on my regular program for this one because we had some issues. So let me go ahead and show you. I'm going to flip my screen just to show you a couple things about Debbie, you tuned in at the right time. I love it. This is, this is where we're going to start talking about design here. So let me go ahead and move my phone just a little bit so I can back it up and flip my screen. So 
this is how you do a random screen share when you're on your phone, okay? Uh, so first off, and this is a great article and I can share it with you guys as well. Um, but first off, let me just show you here. This is one thing that already stands out. Can you guys, can you tell me on here what stands out from this picture to you? And I'm gonna look at the comments here. Yeah, Mindy, my desktop feed has been super slow lately too, I know. They, especially when you look at your business page, oh my gosh, forget it. It takes so long to scroll through. So what you guys may or may not notice here is what does it tell you? It says, join me on Eero, not Vero. Oh, and good call, Erica. The pixels is somebody's account. Um, so that's why they blocked it out. But it says, join me on Eero, not Vero. So the design right here is already a fail. And maybe I can just see that just because I, I now pay attention to a lot of design at, you know, with my work and everything. But you have to understand that that is a huge, huge red flag right there. Like you, you need to fix that. Like if that, that's your business, and these are tips, by the way, if, if it wasn't already noted, like these are tips to help you look at your business and have, a, have that different eye there. It reminds me of how you might add someone's Snapchat account. Yes, Erica, great, great comparison there. So let me um, go ahead and move this out of the way. So yeah, this is what it looks like to me as well, almost like a Snapchat uh, code that you would add someone. And then when you look at this part here, that is what you need to pay attention to is that that does not work with this. That looks like it's just some side triangle that's with Eero. So now I'm trying to join you on Eero, but I have no idea what Eero is because I was looking for Vero, right? So that's a design uh, issue right off the bat. Uh, it reminds me of how you might, oh yeah, yeah, I saw that. Then what people are complaining a lot about is the wait time when you go to log in. This guy's using one password, by the way, so, or yeah, I think this is the author's mail. This is good. They're using one password. Um, so keep in mind when you launch something, especially at the beginning, that is expected. Like no doubt when you launch something, you don't know how many people are going to be coming to your site. You don't know how many people are going to be using it. And so it's going to, they're going to have a, a, a wait time. Like that's just a given, right? Uh, even when I launched stupideasy.com, like I was thinking about that. I was like, okay, I have no idea how many people are going to come to this site. It could crash the first day because so many people are going to be like, oh my gosh, I need this. This is the best ever. Um, but you just don't know. So you can only anticipate that and, and like do the best you can. But remember guys, this has been out since 2015. Now they haven't had traffic though, uh, assuming they haven't had traffic according to the articles since this last week, therefore they're getting held up, right? So you have to contact your IT. You have to start working on getting that speed up because if you have these happening, this wait time happening all the time, you're gonna lose people left and right. Now let's say you're frustrated with Instagram, frustrated with um, Facebook or whatever, and you're like, okay, I'm gonna give this a shot, I'm gonna hold tight, this is gonna work, I'll make it happen. Well, then you come over here, again, there's the logo, which is hard to read, looks like it's Eero, because of this stands out, that doesn't. And then on top, um, yeah, Debbie, right? I've heard the servers have problems and deleting your info is difficult. Ooh, good call, Debbie. Yes, there's actually an article. Uh, if anybody has already created an account, let me know in the comments and I can share an article with you on how to delete your account. I actually didn't read it yet because I haven't created an account yet and it's so new, but apparently that is a big thing as well. Thank you for bringing that up. So for um, this uh, user's profile, Brian, this is what the um, home screen looks like, it looks like. So you know, I, I'm okay with this. I mean, it looks a little flat to me, you know, but it, it's, it's stuff that we know. Search, you know, this is probably our contacts. This, I'm not really sure. This is notifications and this is messaging, right? Like that, that seems like what it would work. And then you have settings, requests, and then my post. Okay, that makes sense. But what was being... What some people are complaining about is the fact that 
this contact part is hard to understand because you can't just um, search for your contacts, like your friends in your contacts. You actually have to go on your profile, then connect, oops, sorry, then your connections, which is here, and then you have to go to the plus sign in the top right here. So it's not, you know, user friendly in that sense. So again, you, if you're the creator of a product, in this case, Vero, what you want to make sure that you do is that you have people beta test it, you run through it, um, you ask them questions, you find out like, is this easy for you to uh, navigate? Specifically, where would you go to find your contacts? And then you would have somebody actually go through and run this step. Well, if I'm average Joe, I might go to search and type in their name. Oh, well, that's not where I go. Okay, there, you, the creator needs to make a note of that. Then, you know, you have average Becky who goes right to the person here because that looks like a connection there. And then she sees that she has her contact here or whatever it is. Like, you wanna make sure that you have people that are not you testing out your product once you launch it and then making note of what they say and what they have available. So then here is the example where he went to connections and then he went to the plus sign and then it's add a contact or search your users. Well, if you're adding a contact in almost every other program, you're not searching for a user ever. You're adding a contact and that's it. So it's things like that that you want to make sure that you pay attention to the design and try not to be like way different. Like you can't, you can't just go way out there because then people aren't going to understand and they're not going to figure it out, right? It's going to take forever. Um, I think that was all on this article here. Um, there's some connection codes there. Yeah, so that was it. So let me bring it back over here. Boom. Get you guys back over here. All right, cool. Man, that lighting, there we go. Um, so that's what you guys wanna pay attention to is having that part. Now let me bring up my notes real quick to see what else we got going on here. Um, oh, oh, here's another big one. So going back to the question, which I haven't seen any of you guys ask this, let me just look at the comments, is uh, they should have posted this in a user testing. Exactly, Whitney, exactly. Uh, the old Viacom logo, that's what the V, yeah, that's what the V reminds me of too. Um, I have you guys like sideways. Boy, is today a hot mess. Hopefully you guys are learning something though, right? Uh, so nobody has asked this question that I can, that I have seen yet. So if the platform is free right now and they don't have any ads and they've been around since 2015, what questions should you be asking, even if you're a replay viewer? This is one of the biggest questions that I will ask right off the bat when I meet with new clients, uh, whether or not we work together, uh, when I'm at a workshop and I meet somebody who just created an app or is thinking about creating an app. Like This is one of the biggest questions. If you guys wanted to know something, this is the one to know. Can anybody guess? Oh, Whitney. Whitney, woo, you did it. How are you going to make money? I don't care how great your idea is. I don't care how great my idea is. I don't care what we have ready to go, that we have all the tools and resources we need. At the end of the day, how are you going to make money from it? How are you going to have it available? Like if, if you are, First off, if you are tuning in and you have all the money in the world and you don't have to worry about it, you can just throw uh, whatever out there and see if it works or not, cool. Like we need to connect a little bit more because you and me need to work on some things, okay? Um, but if you're like most of us tuning in and you are being con uh, cautious of your money and you want to really develop something that's going to make an impact, but it's also going to help you pay your bills and not keep you underwater in debt, you need to be able to ask yourself, how am I going to make money? How is this going to make money? It's not to be greedy. There's a difference, right? Like there's a difference with that. You need to just know, how am I going to make money? Let me just look at the comments real quick. Uh, how will it be mon uh, monitored? That's a good one, Vicky. Uh, Erica uh, 
is talking to Mindy. Awesome. How are they going to generate income? Excellent, Aaron. Yep, perfect. Um, I heard it's free for the first million users. Ah, Vicky. Vicky did her homework. I love it. I love it. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in just a second. So um, I will tell you that I have met people who have amazing ideas and who actually have put them in full-on motion. Sadly, this they could not answer this question. And they have spent a lot of money. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot of money with loans, um, mortgage. How do you, what do you even call it? I don't own a house, so I don't even know, but lean on your mortgage, things like that. Like, like bad, bad, you know, like there, there's a difference from being all in. I, I got to do this. Cause this is, this is, everyone says to be all in and just go for it. There's a difference from that and understanding like where your money is going and how you're going to get it back. Like you, you need to know that. So that's a big one. Um, going back to Vicky's comment here, hearing about it's free for like the first million users. So yes, they have right now, the way it's set up is that the first, um, I don't think I have it in my notes, but there's like the first, uh, oh, for, yeah. So they're waiving the fee. Here's, here's what the, the thing says, quote, waiving, end quote, the fee for its first million users but that users will eventually be required to pay a small annual fee. Now you guys tell me, cause I've asked this question before. I can't remember if I've asked it on the show or if on my personal profile, but you, uh, you tell me, even if you're watching the replay, would you pay a fee? And it could be small. It could be a dollar. It could be $5. It could be $20. I don't care. You name a price if you want. I don't care. I just want to know, would you pay any type of fee? to have a social media platform that gives you what you want without ads? That's today's question, that's today's homework. So you let me know even if you're watching the replay. Now, what they're doing, and this is another reason why I think that they're getting all of these downloads and all these people onto the platform all of a sudden is because of that urgency, right? Like, oh my gosh, I need to be one of those million users because I don't wanna pay for this. Like, even if it's not good, I just want to be on there just so I don't have to pay, right? Like how many of you are thinking that same thing? Let me look at the um, comments. Uh, maybe if it works, yes, okay. Uh, creates a sense of urgency to join, right, Aaron? Yep. Uh, probably, maybe, I don't know, yep. Yeah, would probably pay. Uh, no, because I don't uh, know how much I would even be on Facebook these days, uh, very much if I weren't using it for business. Yeah, exactly. So. So that brings up a great point, right, Mindy, is that when, when I asked that question, you guys, um, would you pay a fee to be on a social media network? It can be an easy yes or no. However, it would also depend, for those of us who are really into social media for business, it, the next question would be, well, do I have to pay a fee for my personal use or my business use? And then you would go from there and then find out like how much you would use it. You know, I think I might be, op I mean, I am open to paying a small fee um, for the use of Facebook, I guess, in this case, we'll just go with that. Um, if it gave me what I wanted, if it wasn't slow with the scrolling, if I didn't have all of these ads, if I could, you know, organize my feed more, like if I just had more control uh, for a small fee because of the business I get from Facebook and what opportunities it has given me. Yeah, no doubt. Like, yeah, I, I would pay a small fee, um, but there'd be a lot of work that would need to go into getting it comfortable for me to do that, right? Uh, hopefully that makes sense, um, right? So could you advertise business and just not pay for ads, right? So yeah, so there's all these other things, right? Erica, agree for business, yes. So, um, or Whitney, sorry. Um, Erica, for business reasons, yes. For personal, no, exactly, right? Now here's the interesting part. This is where I'm gonna be curious to see how Vero works out for people. Um, I know we're getting close on time. So Vero is also um, taking a cut. So this is an interesting one. For those of you who are business owners, listen up. Vero also takes a cut from products other companies sell within the app. Now, what does that tell me? Man, that light is so bright. Let's see if I can, there we go. Um, so what, the, just reading that one liner, 
I'll read it again. Vero also takes a cut from products other companies sell within the app. When I read that, the first thing that comes to my mind is if I'm selling, let's say my Facebook creator course right here, my Facebook live court training course, it's not even a course training. It's only one hour. So training, if I was to sell that through my Vero account, they would take a cut from every sale. Okay, well, if, if that means that I didn't have to pay a monthly due for it, maybe. But then what's the next question as business owners we should be asking? So I can't, uh, I'm looking at Whitney's comments, so I can't sell unless I give them a cut. That's what it's sounding like, uh, Whitney. So they want a fee like Etsy. Yep, right, Vicky. So I'm curious. Yeah, interesting, depends on the cut. Thank you, Erica. That's what we need to be asking ourselves, right? As business owners, soon to be as business owners, you need to be asking yourself, okay, well, what's the cut? And then let's, take, let's fast forward past the million users, okay? Real quick, just for this example. Let's say Vero, you're, oh, you're the user that comes in right after that million user, millionth user and you have to pay a fee. Now, you need to ask yourself, okay, am I paying a fee to be on here for personal and business? Am I paying a fee on top of anything I sell? I have to give a cut away. That's what it's sounding like. It's going towards that membership style and that's where you'll have to really evaluate, is it worth it or not? So before you jump onto any kind of new platform, I'm not just saying Vero, but anything, you want to test it yourself and you want to see what it develops into and what comes around it because the one thing you don't want to do is ask all of your followers to move with you to some new platform that then you don't like or is not suiting you and your followers. And then you have to ask them to move back or go somewhere else. You, you lose a lot of people that way. Um, so just keep that in mind. I'm just looking at the comments here. I want to pay and give them a cut too. Yeah, um, true. It depends on the cut. Exactly. Right, Mindy? So those are the things that you have to about what is that going to do for you? And then um, I'm just looking at my notes and we talked about branding and waiting time. Okay, cool. So we covered all of that. Even with tech issues, we covered all of that. That's awesome. Um, so any questions you guys have about, you know, what we talked about, what we learned here today, I'm just looking at the comments and then you'll have to pay PayPal. Ah, see, Mindy is thinking like a business owner. So not only did we talk about paying a flat fee, hopefully for this social media platform. We talked about possibly having a cut that we don't know taken out of our sales from anything that we sell. But then, then we have to worry about the credit card processing fees, the cut that PayPal takes, the cut that Stripe takes, or any other one. Um, that's another big one that you have to understand. Um, how can they even track and force that review every post for links that might be selling something elsewhere? Yeah, Aaron, my guess would be that they would have some kind of affiliate program, um, some kind of membership uh, plug-in type thing that tracks links. Like what my guess would be is that you would have a store feature on your uh, website or on your Vero account, kind of like what you have here on Facebook. Facebook has a store option. And then anything that you would add to that store, you would then do it. Um, but then if you were to just share a link to your direct store on your website, my guess is that they would have some kind of a pixel slash uh, affiliate code or something to track it. I'm sure that they have ways to, to track that information. <laughs> Let me go lock down an account just in case Whitney says, yeah, Whitney, you can report, Whitney, you can be on the show. You, you can test it out and then you can give us your user experience. You can come on the show and give us your user experience. How about that, you guys? Now, now everyone, there's your homework, Whitney. Now everyone's gonna wanna hear from you. Um, so that's the stuff that you wanna think about, right? Now, I don't know, before I let you guys go here, what about this? Let me ask you, even if you're watching the replay, how many of you guys, we just went through that, that rundown, right? We said, okay, the platform costs money, the, um, there's gonna be a fee taken out if we sell something. Then there's also a credit card processing fee. Like how many of you guys, knowing that information, 
would then, and be honest, be honest, nobody's going to get in trouble if they're not, if they don't do this. But how many of you would then go and create a spreadsheet and plug in some numbers? Example, spreadsheet, platform costs, X amount per month, times that by 12. If I sell product at X amount, they take out a cut, we'll say 5%, because I'm sure it's that or more, uh, equals this. And then credit card processing fee takes out 2.9% plus 30 cents for PayPal and Stripe, which is why you want to go with them. There's a bonus tip. And then you put out your fee there. And then you look at that total, and then you realize how much it's costing you versus how much it's actually um, you're actually making from it, right? Does anybody do that? You, you can be shy, that's fine, even if you're watching the replay, and it's okay if you say no, you haven't done that. Because here's the thing, you don't know what you don't know. And maybe you didn't know how to go through and actually plug in those numbers. Maybe you didn't think to put them in a spreadsheet. Maybe you just wrote it down on a piece of paper. Like, that's okay. I'm just, I'm planting the seed and giving you guys some bonus material there, right? Um, and then, uh, let's see, I'm just looking at the comments. Yep, because all these fees determine the price of the product. Yes, Whitney, exactly, exactly. And that's how you figure out your pricing, right? That's how you do it. You know, that, you guys, that's the exact way I came up with my fees for uh, Stupid Easy, right? Like we talked about that on Friday's episode last week. Um, we talked about stupideasy.com. That's my other business. And that's an online course platform. Now, the way I came up with the fees, which are very low, especially for the industry, is I looked at what was already out there. I looked at the, the membership pricing. I looked at what fees uh, get taken out for your sales. I looked at um, what a typical sale is, like how much of a typical pricing for those courses are. And you know, I went through that whole list. And then I went through my spreadsheet several times to make sure that I was adding things up, that I was going through and making sure I did the correct math. And then from there, understanding how many memberships I had to sell at this level versus this level and how many of those people would have to sell a course just to get their money back. You guys, it's $49 a month over at stupideasy.com to have your online courses there. You can have unlimited courses for 49 bucks and you can sell them for whatever price. You sell one course at $49, it pays for your entire month's membership. And there's only 4% taken out for your fees because that covers credit card processing. Like, I'm not... ...program from that business. I'm trying to make sure that it's sustainable for itself and that it helps people get to where they need to be and get their product out there and help them understand to break things down so that people actually stay engaged and get that quick win, right? So there, there's reasoning behind those pricing. And there is a formula that goes with it. And that's part of what I just shared with you. So aren't you glad you tuned in? All right, guys. So I'm going to let you go. I don't think there's going to be an outro video today because uh, I'm using the creator app. I hope that was informative for you and that it um, will be interesting to see what happens. If you uh, have any feedback, of course, share in the comments. But also, if you do go and get a Vero account, I'm not saying you should, but if you do, let us know what you think. And if you want to be on the show, whether you want to talk about Vero or you want to just be a guest on the show, go to edtalktv.com, fill out the guest request form. That's all you have to do. And then we can see you here on the show. Have a great night, guys, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Take care.